Hi, thanks for joining us for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. This is the first episode of the growing season. It will be spring soon, and that means it's time to get the garden ready for planting. Also, roses are beautiful, but need to be cared for. We'll let you know what you need to do now to get great roses later in the spring. That's just ahead on the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation, the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Walter Battle. Walter is a UT Extension Director in Haywood County. And Mr. Jimmy Moser is here. Mr. Jimmy is a Master Rosarian right here in Shelby County. Thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you for having us. All right, Walt. Soil prep. You know, people are ready to get in their gardens. How do they need to get started? Oh, well, I, I, I'll tell you, it's an exciting time and, you know, I've, I'm tired of looking at the, the, the seed catalogs. It's ready right. to get started. But uh, the main thing is, now, obviously, if you have not uh, performed your soil test yet, go ahead on and do that because there's still time uh, to get the results back, get the lime in, and, and all of that. Also, it's, it's time to add your manure, your compost, all those uh, materials that can build the organic matter in your soils. And also, uh, if you are having some problems with some weeds that's overwintered, if you're one of the people who use herbicides, mm -hmm. now's the time to go out and spray some of your glyphosate products to kill off all those overwintering weeds and things like that uh, to get it, you know, you know, get garden plot ready. Okay. Now, how do you determine if your soil is too wet? And, and of course, that's going to be a big problem because we get a lot of our rains in the fall of the year. That's right. So how do we make that determination? Well, you know, it's real scientific. Okay. <laughs> it, it, I mean, uh, I mean, you, you, it's real scientific. But basically, as you can see here, I have bought some soil. And uh, if you can make a mud ball like this, then your soil's too wet. Okay, it's too now, wet. I've even heard some people get a little more scientific, and they say, hey, if you can roll it, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the people who really get scientific and make little uh, things like, you know, like that little ribbons right. is too wet. So okay. anything like that, that soil is just too wet to work. You should, your soil should be kind of crumbly. You know, that's what you really would like to, to see. You know, it's time to start work. This is still a little wet, but, okay. but uh, it, it's time to get started with that. Is that out of your own garden? <laughs> yes, uh huh. Yes, yes. Well, actually, this is at a new little site I'm going to plant. I found a little spot by the house that I want to plant in. Okay. So, yes. All right, good deal. Well, look, what if my soil drains poorly? Okay. Then what do we need to do? Well, here's your best friend, sand. All right. Uh, and if this soil is draining poorly, all you want to do is just get in here and, uh, you know, just add sand to it. That's going to open up the, uh, the pore spacing and stuff like that to kind of uh, relieve those problems. And the way you can determine if you're having uh, uh, you know, poor drainage in your soils, if you have like low spots or where water stands, things like that, obviously it's going to be an area that has a lot of clay. Okay. So once again, building up your organic matter over time will help alleviate that problem. Okay. Now, now what kind of sand? Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be asking that question. Uh, I just usually use just, just regular what I can find. And I'll okay. be honest with you, uh, this is just some, uh, just some, some play sand uh, that comes in a, uh, a bag. And this is what I utilize. Now, there are, there are some studies out there on using different types. Right. But in small communities like, my, like mine, you kind of get what you can get, okay? okay? So, you know, we don't have a lot of choices out there. Right. And I know here you can use the builder sand. That's right, pretty the builder good. sand. Or the red sand would right. be uh, pretty good sand to use, uh, you know, for drainage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, yes. So I guess it just depends on where you are and what you can get, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. 
Now, what about garden maintenance? Well, now, that's always a big topic. So. Well, again, here's 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 a great great example here. Uh, you know, I guess when they built my house, uh, obviously they kind of buried some of the stuff. You know, <laughs> so look, you know, go in there and remove all these old bricks. So they had bricks in there. Uh, there's some block wire, uh, <laughs> and then of course this has quite a few little rocks and and all that. So what I'm going to probably do. Uh, well, no, not probably. I will do. Uh, I'm going to take this soil and I'm going to work it all up with my tiller. Uh, I'm going to remove all this old uh, Bermuda grass and all this stuff, get as much of that as I can okay. out of there. And then I'm going to add some of this good compost all right. in there. And I am going to just work all that in because, you know, I have plenty of compost. You know? Compost looks good. Too. Oh, yes. This is this is some good stuff. Uh, up there with all those cotton gins, we have all that good gin right. trash and all that to work with. And then that should, you know, as I work that up, you can see it's really becoming beautiful, you right. know, and, and gardeners and people like that really like that. But you have to just get all those sticks out. Again, since this is kind of clay, I'm going to add some more sand in that and just work that up with my, with my trowel. And now, you mentioned that you, you do teal yes. on your garden area. How deep? Uh, well, you know, uh, my initial break is probably going to be about a good two feet. Okay. I'm going to be honest when I really break my soil for the first time on a new spot. Okay. But typically, I'm running about a good foot. I'm going to be honest foot. with you. A good foot is what I usually run in my, in my gardens that's already established. Okay. And how many parts to compost, to soil? I mean, I'll you be just kind of play with it. You just kind of play okay. with it till you just get your texture. I'm sure out there on the web, I hate to say that, but... <laughs> You know, there's all kind of recipes sure, on sure. what to add because they're all different. Like, you know, obviously if I added some manure in this, I would, you know, not add a whole lot because it's so rich sure. in nitrogen and all that. So, uh, you know, you have to just kind of play it by, by touch and experience. Okay. But, uh, but there are all kind of recipes out there. There are also some uh, compost tea recipes mm -hmm. out there. And thing, you know, things like that that you can utilize. Okay. Now, once you get it tilled, then you know, for that first year, and say this is year three, do you still have to till? Uh, uh, I always lightly till my my gardens. Like, okay. You know, always. Uh, I like to get that get that old crop residue, uh, leaves and things like that that's falling on there. Get all that stuff incorporated in there. Just getting that seed bed up and ready. But like I said, I like to raise my my, my seed beds up. About a good, uh, lot, sometimes about a good mm, 10 inches or so. Uh, that way I get good drainage when I plant okay. and, and all that. So I, I kind of ridge everything up when I plant. Okay. Which well, leads to the next question then. What should I do with leftover crop residue? Well, like I said, you know, uh, in, in, on the fall shows, we always tell everybody to clean all this stuff up. Right. Because, you know, obviously you can leave places so that insects can overwinter and also diseases and things like that. But if you don't, because sometimes mm -hmm. life happens and we just can't get to it, uh, just till it in. And, and, and that stuff will sit there and build over time, you know, and rot and decay. And, and it'll just build your soil up and make those earthworms happy. And, <laughs> and you know, that's, hey, that's what it's all about, getting those earthworms happy. Right, because if we see those earthworms, and that's a good sign of uh, some good quality soil there, right? Yes, that's what you want to see. You want to see those, you want to see those night crawlers out there. You know, you, you know you're doing a good job. Okay. Now, now, for our viewers, again, we're looking for organic matter, organic material. So how yes. do we get some of that organic matter? Well, uh, one of the best ways you can do it as a gardener is to just simply compost. Okay. Uh, and, you know, you, you compost those leaves, um, you know, uh, the, the vegetable scraps left over from your salads and things like that uh, when you're cooking, uh, coffee grinds. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, from time to time, you add a little bit of sawdust in there every now and then. Make sure it comes, it's some good sawdust that doesn't have some treated chemicals and stuff okay. like that in it to kind of get that carbon built up in it a little bit to, to get that heat, to, you know, and then let that stuff sit out there and rot and turn it over from time <laughs> to time. Uh, you know, those are the things you, that you have to do in order to, you know, build that organic matter up, get that good compost to build that organic matter up in the soil. All right, well, we definitely appreciate that information. Yes. And yes. now that the soil is ready, next week we'll be talking about how to plant cool season vegetables. Oh, yes, yes. All right. it's, it's, it's fun time now. Fun time. Yes. Thanks, Walt. Mm -hmm. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you.
All right, Mr. Jimmy, roses. So what do we need to know about getting our roses ready? Okay, for the spring. One of the things that I've asked more about anything else, when do I move a rose? Oh, okay. Now's the time to move the rose. Now's the time. Prepare you a hole to put it in, mix you up a good compost uh, mixture, okay. put some super phosphate or bone meal in the bottom of the hole, dig it up with a ball of dirt, and set it in a new hole. Water it in, and let her go. You'll never know it's been moved. Another thing about planting roses, you'll buy them in a pot, and I found in order to make that plant go rather than pull it out and lose all of the root ball around it, if you'll take your pot, cut the bottom of it out, set it down in the hole, take your box cutter and cut the pot while it's in the hole and pull the pot out around it and it'll never know it's been moved. Oh, how about that? I'm in a hurry because I don't have much time. <laughs> <laughs> now we want to talk about pruning. Okay. This year we've had an awful lot of winter damage. You can see it on this cane here. It's dead down to it. You cut below the winter damage, you cut to a bud eye, a little, little eye right there. You cut it out at an angle. Now, you want to cut to white pith. There's no white pith here. There's green pith. Let's use another cane. All right, we're cutting this one. We want to cut it to white pith. Okay. You can see can white see pith. That's the way it'll grow back good. Trim it up good. If you got leaves on the bushes, Get them off. You need to pull the bushes off, the leaves off, because that's they've been there all winter. They've covered, got disease. Now a climber. <clears throat> you'll have canes on a climber. You'll have little buds like this coming out. Cut them all off. Strip that cane off. Now I know this one's dead because it's got winter damage, but I didn't have a live one, so <laughs> I brought this one. So we're going to strip it all off? Yeah. All right. Nip all those off. You do not want to prune a climber that's a one-time bloomer. If you do, you'll not have blooms this year. Okay. The two of us that brings to mind is a white dawn and a, and a, and a blaze. They're one-time bloomers. They bloom good in the spring, but you prune them after they bloom. After they bloom. After okay. they bloom. Make sure we get now, that. Knockout roses. Most knockout. everybody now grows knockout yes, roses. Yes, they do. There's a good example of it. You don't prune them like you do a hybrid tea. But what I like to do is prune, get all of the twiggy growth off of it, <laughs> shape the bush, get to the good strong stems, <clears throat> kind of give it around that thick, cut it down. It won't hurt to cut it. Just take your little dose of c courage and just, <laughs> just okay. cut it down. It'll grow back. I'm taking All good notes, need. Mr. Jimmy, because I have knockouts at home, so I'm taking good notes. Okay. So, all of your good growth comes from new growth from a thing. Little okay. old stems like that, cut it off. I said, we, we pruning that to, to right. nothing. Yeah. Right there, you'll get right. good growth coming about from down here. And this bush here was a, a home run. And it, after the first bloom cycle, it'll throw these big canes up like that. If you got one of them sticking out, wow. cut it off. If you can. If you can. <laughs> <laughs> cut it off. All right, cut it off. Cut it off. It'll grow, out, it'll grow back from this. Wow, how about wow. that? Now, ah. that was severely pruned. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yes, it was. Right. This will represent a hybrid tea. They, hybrid they, tea. You prune them all together different. Okay. You want to cut out all of the dead wood to start with, all the twiggy growth to start with. You want to open the bush up okay. to where, it's, where you've got good air circulation in the middle. And you can cut a bush to make it grow any way you want to by locating the bud eyes. If you've got one coming out here and you want it to grow that way, you cut it here. Oh, okay. If you want it to grow inside, which you do not want to, mm -hmm. you cut it here. You see the bud eyes coming out? You recognize bud eyes by little swellings that you see on the bush. Okay. And we're going to butcher this booger cook too good. When we get through with it. Watch out, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> when we get through with it, it'll be opened up. The bud eyes should be to the outside. The center of the bush should be open. That, be, just oh, like that's a good hybrid tea blooming right there. Almost like a, I like that. Okay, After a bowl. Do, yeah. yeah, it is. It's like you set a bowl in it. I covered covered uh, uh, dead wood. First thing you do in a bush when you're pruning is cut the dead wood out first. Okay. Then get your th twiggy growth out. Cut to a green, white green pith. So you got dead cane. Right. We're gonna have a lot of winter damage this year because we had some rough weather. See that's still got kind of. <clears throat> Caramel, it's called. You uh -huh. want to go to white, with good white pith like that. Okay. I got you. Good white pith, and that's the way it did. Now, after you do that, All right. 
I like to come in there with a good dormant spray and spray them. Okay. Spray them with either lime sulfur or oil, and I've used both, a mixture of both. Now, the mixture I use is four tablespoons of each in a gallon of water okay. to spray them all up. Now, why do we need to spray them, though? Let's tell our to clean that. up the leftover diseases from last year and some insect eggs that might be on, on the bush. Okay. <clears throat> spray your dormant oil and you... <clears throat> now, your feeding, after you get all this pruned up, what I like to do is use a good organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Rose tone's a good one. It's got, rose, got chemical and um, uh, organics in it also. Organics, you can use cottonseed meal, alfalfa pellets, uh, chicken pellets mm -hmm. if you can find them. And uh, then I use a, about a cup of, or two of, or especially around a, your knockout roses, about two cups of triple 13 right. around them will carry them the rest of the year. They'll mm -hmm. bloom on, okay. keep on coming. After they want to start blooming, you need to trim them back, trim the blooms back. And for preventive on your hybrid teas, your climbers, your miniatures, <coughs> there's two products out there that, that you buy at the box stores. One is a, a Rose Pride, a <laughs> tablespoon to the gallon, but read the directions on the bottle. Okay. Sometimes the formula change. And another one is the Immunox that you spray okay. on a weekly basis. Wow, Unless weekly? Okay. On a weekly basis. Okay. Those two are. Okay. You get a little further into it, talk to Rose there, and then they'll come up with a, a formula that you use every two weeks. Okay. That's what I use. But you can't buy a commercial. Okay. Now tell me this, when is the best time to prune our roses? Though? Right now. Right now. So we right can do now. that right now. We, we say from uh, President's Day to our 1st of March, and that's coming up on this show, 1st of March. First prune them. They're ready to prune. Hopefully the weather won't <laughs> break a little bit. I've okay. already started pruning. Uh, about 25 bushes, and I've got about 100 more to go. So I start early usually. Another thing you need to watch for after you prune, if you prune early, is dieback. You'll see black. After you cut this off, you'll see some black starting to come down there, and it'll crawl on down that cane and go plumb down. When you find that, you want to cut below that, that dieback, we call it, okay. in order to, uh, to save that bush. Mr. Jimmy, we appreciate that information. Well, you gave us a lot. That's good. <laughs> so now we go home and take care of those roses, Walt. That's right. That's now right. I know what to do with my knockouts. There's nothing any more prettier than a rose. All Except right. There you have it for the master rosaria himself. Except a pretty woman. Except a pretty woman. <laughs> there you go. All right. That leads us right into our Q&A session. All right. <laughs> Dear Family Plot, I would like to know the name of this small tree that my neighbor has. It is about 10 feet tall and appears to be evergreen, cons considering it does lose its leaves during the winter. Would this tree be a good fit for the Mid-South climate? Is it evergreen? Would it be easy to maintain? And could I easily keep it pruned to a height of about 10 feet? And that's a lot in that. Well, but. what do you think this tree is? Well, I'm, I'm thinking of probably a sweet bay magnolia yes. or something like that. It is a sweet bay magnolia. Magnolia virginiana. Oh, okay. That's what that is. Also called the swamp. I was going to ask, is that, is that Right, the... because it can actually deal with wet soils, so okay. wet or swampy type soils. Uh, real good plant, beautiful plant. It's a semi-evergreen. Yes. Okay. It depends on how harsh the winters are. If we have a harsh winter, then it will lose its leaves. But mm -hmm. if you have a relatively mild winter, it'll hold on to those leaves. Yes, uh, we have two at the office mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Carol Reese recommended. Uh, yes. And they've... They've done fine. We planted them about uh, about eight years ago, and they they look good. Yeah, if you drive up and down Germantown Parkway, you'll see them on either side of the road. Uh, they're beautiful plants. Uh, Michael Durr says they're lovely, graceful, small patio or tree specimens. Okay. So if Michael Durr says it's a lovely, beautiful plant, then I would go with it. There you go. I would go with it. But it is Sweet Bay Magnolia. All right, thanks, Miss Katie. Appreciate that question. Okay, here's our next question. How do you feel about using horse manure in your vegetable garden? Wonderful. Oh, yes, it's, it's a great source. Wonderful. Uh, and and I Mr. Will, Jimmy says wonderful. Yeah, it's what says wonderful. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, any source of livestock mm -hmm. manure, notice okay. the emphasis livestock. Can you is, name some of those? It's excellent. Yes, oh, sure, you have cattle, okay. you know, uh, sheep, goat, um, and obviously you have poultry, sure. manure. I mean, you can't, you know, once it's composted and, you know, and, you know, it, it's fine. It's fine. 
Okay, Mr. Jimmy, any any comments on that? No, no. Okay. I, I'll use it on roses. It's wonderful. They great to mulch roses with. Yes. Great to mulch roses with. Just be a little careful with uh, chicken manure though, because it can burn if it has not composted. Okay. Yeah. So it needs to be composted before we use it in sure. our vegetables. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. I use okay. the, I use the dehydrated pellets. Mm -hmm. That's that you can buy at several places around. Sure. And uh, I use it in my garden and also in my roses. Okay. Do you till it in, Walt? Oh, yeah, I just incorporate yeah, till it in. Till it in for the roses mm -hmm. as well. Okay. I've already done it in my garden. Okay. So it's good stuff down. to use. Yes. Right. They break down. Breaks down pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Y'all probably have a lot of supply of that in Haywood County. Oh, I'm sure with the livestock. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. All right. Here's our next question. Can you use a pre-emerge in a vegetable garden. Be careful. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. You, you can use it, but if you follow the label. Okay. 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 It says, you know, once the plants are well established, right. talking about, you, you know, your crop, then you can put it down and, <laughs> you and better that. Not, you better not you put a plant around a squash you know. plant, I can tell you that. Oh, sure, sure. I, I, <laughs> well, I'm talking about mainly praying uh, right. is what I'm, I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, but it says it on the label, so, you know, make sure that the plant, and you may want to read the label to make sure that you're not hit, using it on a species, a crop species yeah. that you should be bits. used for. Don't use it on cucumbers. So, yeah, we know not to use it on yeah. cucumbers. Okay, but it will be on the label. Yeah, it'll be so on the we label. Want to make sure it'll be on that the everybody label. reads yeah. that and mm -hmm. follow uh, that label. And for the most part, most of the pre emergents will get rid of what the, the grasses, maybe some of your broadleaf. A lot of your broadleaf weeds, reeds and things like that, yes. For the most part. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you want to make sure that those plant materials are established. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh -huh. preen, for example, is not going to know the difference between a weed seed That's right. and a seed of your desirable vegetable That's right. crop. That's exactly right. So you have to be careful uh, with that. Okay, uh, here's our next question. This is a good one this time of the year. Uh, is it too late to use a dormant spray on my shrub? So we'll start with you, Walter, and then we'll get Mr. Jimmy. Well, uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, you can use them pretty much throughout until the temperatures, I believe, it gets about in the 80s. You probably want to back off using a lot of horticultural oils and those type of things. But up to that point, uh, yes, because they're going to catch all those little emerging Insects and lava and all that stuff. Scale. It's gonna clean that up. Yeah, yes. scale. Okay. All right, Mr. Jimmy. How about again for the roses? We can use the. Oh, absolutely. Oil. You got to. You got to use it in, in the spring. It, it takes care of your scale, your spider mite eggs, uh, all mm -hmm. your leftover insects you had there, plus your disease also. The okay. dormant oil is good. If you don't mm -hmm. have dormant oil, you can use, actually use canola oil. Mm. That'll work. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. You can use canola. the canola oil. If, you know, an ordinary person's got canola oil, they don't want to go out and buy a <laughs> gallon of dormant oil for three or four little old bushes. Right. But yes. yeah, it'll work. Okay. But you just have to make sure you get good coverage. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Got a coverage. Mm -hmm. If you don't hit them, they won't get them. All right. There you go. All right, Mr. Jimmy, Mr. Walt, we appreciate you being here today. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us a letter or an email with your gardening questions. Send your email to familyplot at wkno.org. The mailing address is Family Plot, 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee, 38016. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for the Family Plot, Gardening in Mid South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwin's Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.